Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode, we're going to play the final two games of our season and conclude the first season in charge of Sheffield United. Now we're not safe yet, but we're pretty close. So there's been two games that we need to review since the last time we met. The first of which was a 3-2 away defeat against Wolves. Ender Stevens had put us ahead inside 18 minutes. Morgan Gibbs-White had equalised for Wolves and then Raul Jimenez put them ahead through the penalty spot. Coutron came on and scored in the 78th minute. Billy Sharp got us a consolation shortly after but we could not get our third goal and we couldn't get the point. Next up was against home against Southampton and it was the biggest disappointment of the season so far. We absolutely collapsed in the final 10 minutes. McBurney put us ahead inside 12 minutes and then Oliver Norwood got himself sent off on the 14th minute so we were with 10 men for the vast majority of this game. But McBurney got another just after half time and then Lee Smooset got us a third. We were 3-0 up on 77 minutes but then Heusberg with two goals, Nathan Redman with one, five, within what's that, five minutes they got three goals and we managed to only get the draw. How hugely disappointing. We played so well for the first 80 minutes and so then so going into the final two games we sit in 14th position six points clear from Brighton so we are all but mathematically safe as long as we get one point we will survive our first season in charge of Sheffield United so the two games we've got are Crystal Palace and West Ham Palace are well down there in 19th I believe they are already relegated so no doubt they'll end up beating us 6-0 and then West Ham they are in the top half of the table, so they are already on the beach, so you never know. Going into the game against Crystal Palace, this is how we're going to line up. Dean Henderson in goal, John Egan, Kira and O'Connell in the defence with Baldock and Ender Stevens as our wing-backs. Ben Osborne and John Flex are going to start. Oliver Norwood is, of course, suspended after his red card in the last game. Ravel Morrison is actually going to get a start in attack and midfield. McBurney and Billy Sharp are going to partner themselves up top. Lee Smooset drops to the bench. Um, Freeman is currently injured, that's why he's not starting. Usually McBurney would drop into that attack midfield role, but he's a little he's been playing incredibly well up front, so I want to keep him there. Last time we played Crystal Palace, it ended up in either it was a 5-2 or 5-3 victory for ourselves away from home. The Akumaris with a 5-4-1 highly defensive tactic. Uh, obviously there's going to be lots of wing player coming from Andros Towns as Adama Traoria. Uh, particularly with Van Aanholt on this left-hand side as well. He's an attack and fullback. So they're playing a pretty defensive formation. No Zaha, which is nice to see. Um, we'll have to be at our best. If we get a point in today's game, we're safe. If we don't, we might still be safe. So Crystal Palace kick off shooting from right to left in the first half for them. We are shooting from left to right. Let's see how we get on. First 25 minutes or so are completely dead so far. They're being highly defensive, we being highly attacking, but not really that great attacking wise. It's probably going to be a case of um, neither side really taking a proper strong foothold in this game. As you can see, the first half is pretty much done as things are. <laughs> we are nil nil. Worst first half ever. Let's kick off for the second. Don't get me wrong, either a nil nil would absolutely suit me fine. That would guarantee our Premier League status. And that will be achievement completed in terms of our objectives from the board this season. But we are our first highlight of the game. Four minutes into the second half. Let's see how we'll get on. John Egan finds Ben Osborne in midfield. Who finds Fleck. Who passes it out to the left-hand side with O'Connell. The ball finds its way to Ender Stevens on the left-hand side. Who gets dispossessed by Adam Atrioria. We all know he's got pace but he doesn't use it there. He goes back to Kelly. Big punt over the top and Christian Bentec is in behind. Dean Henderson's completely messed that up. And now Crystal Palace have got us all uh, all over the place. Townsend is managed to get in the box. Ball whipped in back post. Hits the post. Bentec here should probably be scoring that for Palace. Dean Henderson with a very, very, very shaky um, clearance there. That almost caused us to go 1-0 down. Thankfully we survived and that'll do for me. And the second half is just ticking, ticking away. Ten minutes to go. We'll look to make some subs. We'll get Baldock off for Freeman. We'll get Ben Osborne off for Lundstrom. And we'll get Ender Stevens off for Marvin Ziegler. At that left wing back role. Worst game of football manager I think I've ever seen. One highlight in the whole game. But it's a nil-nil draw. And that should see us survive in the Premier League. There we are. Sheffield United 
avoid relegation, we will be competing in the Premier League next season, which is absolutely fantastic. We will now be able to plan for next season and start building towards getting a better first eleven and just improving the club in general. As you can see here, Premier League fight bravely against relegation. They're very pleased. Not doing great in terms of the board's view. Making the most of set pieces are absolutely devastated by. If I can renegotiate the club culture when a contract time comes up, maybe I will be looking to remove this. I'll be looking to remove player possession football. I might I might keep that. Once we get better players, that'll be great. Um, but working within wage budget, we're on course. We'll feel the FA Cup target. But I hopefully get surviving in the Premier League is enough to actually keep me in the job. And there's who is getting relegated this season. Brighton have fell to being automatically relegated now. Palace and Villa joining them in the Championship. So there's not going to be much movement in terms of the table. We've got one more fixture to play through. West Ham. And we'll discuss our squad and our plans for the summer now and know what's happening. We're here for the final game of the season away from home against West Ham. And this is how we're lining up. Henderson in goal. Egan, Kerr, O'Connell, Baldock and Stevens in the defence. Osborne and Fleck. In the centre of the midfield, McBurney in behind Billy Sharp and Lise Mousset. This will be a lot of the a lot of the players in this squad will be the last time they play for Sheffield United. There's quite a few that are going to end up leaving on um, after the end of the deals this season. There'll be quite a few who find themselves surplus to requirements, and there'll be quite a few who find themselves just part of a squad rather than the first team after the season. So hopefully, we'll have a final good showing in the last game of the season against West Ham and get three points. That is going to be difficult. West Ham have a fantastic side and Yarmolenko goes quite close straight away after a Masuaku cross. But um, hopefully we can beat our former Sir Alex Ferguson challenge team. Ender Stevens with a ball. He switches the player lovely to Baldock on this right hand side. He manages to get past his man but not Declan Rice so Masuaku can now... He doesn't clear. Baldock wins it. Meet least move set. Goes for goal. And uh, yeah, he misses typically. Another highlight now, Baldrock on this right hand side. It gives like, I mean, what is it with throw-ins and giving the ball away? Sebastian Haller drives forward, goes for goal. Probably put off a little bit by uh, Kera coming in with the slide challenger. Uh, you can't manage to get on target, but survive. Another highlight now, free kick played in by Yosin Lees Mousset. Puts it in the back of the net. I'm not even entirely sure who it was who passed the ball to him. I think it was a West Ham player, maybe Masuaku. Uh, the ball's whipped in here, as you can see. Masuaku heads it across. Why? I have no idea. But Mousset gets his 12th goal of the season and capitalises on that mistake. We'll take it. Another highlight now, 32 minutes in. It's also in possession in our own half, but we beat the high line by West Ham and at least Mousset. He just can't finish one-on-ones. He really can't. Highlight now, just before half-time, four minutes to go. Can we hold on and maintain our 1 0 lead going into it? John Egan cuts out a ball from Felipe Anderson and we can break with Ender Stevens on this left hand side. The ball is switched to Baldock on this right hand side. Can he get the ball in? He can. It's cleared by uh, Reid. Now West Ham can come away with the Jack Wilshire trying to find Felipe Anderson. Baldock getting back and intercepting that player. The possession is changing hands. Every single touch of the ball will finally get through. Elise Moussa is one on one. Of course, he misses. Fabianski saves. And now we are half time. We're going 1 0 up. Lise Mousset giving us the lead. You know, I like Lise Mousset. I do. I really do. He just misses an awful lot of chances. And I'm really looking forward to getting some really competent strikers in this formation. I think we'll score quite a lot of goals. Wing backs seem to be pretty overpowered on FM20 so far. We've got two pretty average wing backs in Ender Stevens and uh, Baldock. But um, they're both performing out of the skin so far this season. So. Uh, once we get some competent attacking players, we should really be able to punish teams as Lee Smooth set finds Billy Sharp in the six yard box and he gets his fourth goal of the season and puts us 2 0 up with only half an hour in the game to go. I think this all came from um, John Egan right in the defence, ball over the top, which is another thing that seems incredibly, incredibly overpowered. And Lee Smooth set finds Billy Sharp and it's an easy enough finish at the near post. Another highlight now, it's West Ham coming forward with Jack Wilshire on this left-hand side. Can Baldock get the challenge and he can't. He plays it back to Masuaku, who finds Reid at the edge and takes a strike. And it goes just wide. Another highlight now, Sebastian Haller receives the ball in an advanced position for West Ham. He finds whoever he is on the left-hand side. Plays it back to Masuaku, goes for goal. 
and it goes just over. Only 15 minutes to go in this match, there is another highlight I will look to make some substitutions once this has concluded. And it looks like West Ham are coming forward once again. Pablo Fornals is in behind now, completely does his men. And he doesn't miss one-on-ones and he puts West Ham back within one goal, unless it was offside. Is it offside? It is offside. The goal has been disallowed and we maintain our two-goal advantage. We'll look to go defensive now and we'll look to get some of our tired players off. Ball can come off, Ender Stevens can come off and McBurney can also make way for some fresh legs. Hopefully we'll be able to get the win today. If we'd, they end up coming back, it's not the end of the world. As Lise Mousset, lovely first touch. <laughs> and he goes for the dink. How are Mousset, man? You can't be doing that. He's had a great game as well. That's the annoying thing. Corner for West Ham. Played in O'Connell. Manages to get it rid of Mousset. Can pick up the ball on the edge and drive forward with it. He can't... Oh, he's just went for a sliding challenge. Felipe Anderson from behind. Dirty, dirty challenge. And Mousset goes for goal and he hits the bar. That would have been goal of the season had it gone in the back of the net, but it was not to be. Corner for West Ham goes just over the bar. Only three minutes remain and we are surely, surely now safe for three points. And there we are, the final game of the season. Sheffield United 2, West Ham 0. A really, really great performance away from home to end the match on a high. And this is how the table finishes up at the end of the season. We end up finishing in 13th position, which is really, really great. 10 points clear from Brighton in 18th, so we were well clear of the relegation zone. Didn't quite hit the 40 point mark, but we managed to survive, which was the only aim for this season. Keep this team up so it can rebuild in the summer. In terms of our top goal scorer for the league season, Oliver McBurney had a great season in the Premier League, scoring 11 goals, which isn't a crazy high amount, but for a team down fighting in the bottom, having a striker who can get 11 goals for you is definitely a big, big deal. Ender Stevens got the highest average rating, as I was mentioning, during the West Ham match. Wingbacks seem to have a little bit of a overpoweredness, reminiscent of like FM 2015 or something uh, years ago when wingbacks used to be the best positions in the game. Assists for Baldock and Ender Stevens, again, both of our wingbacks heavily involved in the attack and play. Unfortunately, we didn't meet expectations in the FA Cup, getting knocked out in the third round by Newcastle United. That was on me. I played a heavily rotated side, um, prioritising the league over that. So I couldn't really, couldn't really fault anyone else but myself for that. I need to start paying more attention to the club vision and what's expected of me. Uh, third round in the League Cup, we entered in the third round, didn't we? Or maybe the second round, so we got knocked out there. In terms of the club vision for the end of the season, as you can see, we've done okay on some things. And I think remaining in the Premier League should mean the board wants to give us a new contract. And they want to at least, at least keep me for next season. They're not happy with that I'm not playing, making the most of set pieces. Set pieces have never been my game on Football Manager. And I will, if there is an option to be able to remove this, I will be looking to do it at the earliest opportunity. Play possession football, they are a bit disappointed. It will be something I look to do more once we get a higher quality of player. It's not something I felt particularly comfortable with having the sort of level of player that we've got at the club currently. Working with them when we were budget were on course, that is absolutely fine. And that was a required um, club club objective, really. Remaining in the Premier League was quite required. FA Cup reach fourth round was a required importance. So I feel on that probably um, plays quite heavily in terms of the thing. I love this screen, actually, that's been added in FM20. It adds a sort of level of, you know, you kind of, like before, I would just completely dismiss the domestic cups. Um, as long as I remained in the Premier League or matched whatever was happening in the league, we were fine. But this, giving your manager performance, the little ratings, telling you exactly why they are happy or unhappy, I'm really liking this screen. So I, I want to do better with this next season. In terms of the finances and stuff, because Sheffield United are newly promoted and so many of their players hadn't received new contracts and they were pr still pretty much a championship wage level club, They've just been able to rock it up in terms of overall balance throughout the course of the season. So we we'll end the season with 62 million. Obviously a lot more to come in terms of sponsorships and stuff. Next season, everything will probably change in terms of that. Wage budget will skyrocket, most likely, um, depending on how much money they actually give us to be made available. But yeah, as long as we keep within the wage budget that's set by the club, then we're absolutely fine with that. In terms of the overall squad and what will happen next season, Dean Henderson will, of course return to Manchester United after his loan spell. 
Sheffield United don't currently have an agreed fee for Henderson and it's highly unlikely I'm going to be able to get him at a reasonable fee so I wouldn't expect to see him next season. I will have to go out and look to purchase somebody new. In terms of our centre-backs, I've been relatively pleased with Jack O'Connell and John Egan, who both obviously at the club when they started. Particularly Jack O'Connell looks like a fantastic little player. Maybe look to replace John Egan with just someone with a little bit more quality, although I wouldn't be completely disheartened if he was to be in our starting eleven next season. He is still a three-and-a-half-star player. Um, that is a leading player for most Skybet Championship sides, according to my assistant. So it's not exactly top of tier, but... Again, I'm not overly concerned if he is still to be here next season. Kerr, I was signing in January, our only one that we ended up making. He had a bit of a rough start when he first came in, but he's definitely improved as the seasons went on. And he is a level above, particularly John Egan in our squad. As you can see here, he is listed as a good player for most Premier League sides. And I'm more than happy for him to be at the club for next season. Wingbacks is a weird one because, I mean, the George Baldock, He's okay, he's not absolutely amazing, but he's only £1,000 per week, so he's probably going to have to get a new contract. He's English, which means I'm definitely keeping him. Whether it'll be first choice or not, just depends what sort of money we've got and who's available. And the same goes for Ender Stevens. he's had a great season, he's Irish. Um, but because I'm assuming these boys will be homegrown, they're not going to uh, go towards squad reg registrations and stuff, so... We need to really be mindful of that. I've already failed in a couple of signings for the summer because they're not getting work permits. It definitely seems a bit harder than it was on FM19. Ben Osborne is a second second choice player who could leave the club. John Fleck, he's already came to me and says he wants to leave the club to go on to bigger and better things. The Scottish, uh, he's not even a national yet actually, he hasn't got a cap. But he's a very, very talented player and I would like to keep him at the club. But on 35 grand a week, he's wanting to move, he's requesting a move. I might just have to let the boy go. One who I do not want to let go is Oliver Norwood. He's been absolutely fantastic for us. He is one of the highest owners at the club, but the fact that he is a British national, he's this well-rounded, I'm more than happy if he stays at the club. He is currently listed as a decent player for most Premier League sides, so that is not the end of the world for me. I, I want to keep him around. He's done well. Oliver McBurney, although I hate that he's lack of pace and acceleration, the rest of his attributes are absolutely superb. He scored 11 goals in 35 games in the Premier League. Some of them games were played at attack and midfield as well, so it wasn't always up front. So he's done he's done incredibly well. He valued at 20 million. He's only 23 years old. He's still got plenty of time in his contract. It's a cheap wage as well at 20 grand per week. He will be at the club next season, no doubt, unless a major offer comes in for him. Billy Sharp, uh, he probably won't be at the club. Well, he probably will be at the club purely because nobody will want to sign him, basically. Yeah, I know he's a bit of a club legend at che uh, Billy Shop uh, at Sheffield United, and by a bit, I mean he is a legend there. But he's just not particularly great on Football Manager. He hasn't performed well for me. 21 appearances and 7 subs, and only 4 goals in the Premier League. I've been able to get much more out of Lise Mousset, who is definitely a more a player who's more limited in his attributes, but he's just got, got pace. <laughs> it's as simple as that really. He's managed to get 10 goals in 19 starts and 14 sub appearances with 4 assists. Averaging a 6.98. It's definitely better than what Billy Sharp has been able to produce for us. A, a lot of the rest of the players you won't have seen much of because I didn't really heavily rotate this season. We don't really have the strength and depth to be able to do that. So a lot of these players you will probably never see again once we get through the summer transfer period. Move a lot of them on. Sign a lot of replacements. And just generally reshape this entire squad. I'll be reshaping the entire staff, uh, how it all looks. We are pretty poor in terms of coaching compared to the rest of the league, so I'll be looking to massively improve that. Same goes for the recruitment team and the medical staff. Uh, when I join a club midway through a season, I don't like to go in and completely dismantle the, the staff team. So now that we've played through the first season, we're in the summer now, I'll be able to do a little bit more work with that. And if we're thinking about key places where we want to improve in the summer, it's pretty much everywhere honestly we're we're looking for improvements in every position dean henderson will need to replace or goalkeepers high on the priority list um center backs i would like one really good center back to maybe replace john egan right wing back and left wing back we're going to have to sign backups anywhere um so the likelihood is we might try and sign better players than what we've currently got and then drop the likes of baldock and ender stevens to be our backups 
Centre midfield, I'm relatively content with if John Flex stays at the club if he leaves. Of course, I'm going to have to sign somebody a lot better. Attack midfield wise is a key area for me where I really want to sign. Maybe a marquee sign and might end up being an attack midfielder. And strikers. I want two, two new strikers. I want really, really good strikers. So we're going to have to make the most of whatever money Sheffield United give us and really, really play our cards well. Now we're getting towards some of the end of season stuff. So we've got our end of season awards. End of Stevens from left wing back getting uh, fans player of the year. McBurney in second and Baldock in third. Oliver Norwood with goal of the season, which we'll take a look at in a second. Carreo signing of the season. He's only signing our, mate, signing our mate, so no surprise there. And McBurney gets young player of the season. And here's the goal here. It was against Brighton. Did we see this goal? I'm not even sure. Stevens on the left hand side. Plays there Oliver Norwood on the edge. What a hit that is and what a goal to... Uh, I still prefer Lee Smooth's goal, mind. The volley that was in the box. Our season review, we've already really went through this, so we'll quickly skip this. But club vision and expectations meeting. I would really like to be able to get rid of some of these things. So we're going to negotiate and see if we can um, get any of these things off. Make the most set pieces I want off. Play possession football, I'll keep, but sign under players for under the under the age of 23 for the first team. I'll definitely keep, I'll do that anyway. Sign players to sell for a profit. It's favoured, I'll keep that as well. It will be something I look to do. Play possession football, I'll try and get rid of as well. See if we'll get rid of that. No, can we get rid of, make the most of set pieces, suggest? We are unwilling to accept your proposed changes. Okay, fine. So what was the point in being able to negotiate that? They literally negotiated none of them. We have managed to get the board to agree to something, upgrading the youth facilities. That'll do. So I've continued on at the point where I find out my initial budgets. We have actually um, decreased the transfer revenue retained, which is a little bit concerning. It generally means that you're not doing as well financially as you potentially were. We've signed some new deals, extra money for the club, which is great. New scouting budget, 720k. We've got the upper packages for both the senior and the youth package, which is great. And the initial budgets are £45 million and £800,000 per week in the wages. So what that basically means is we've got £45 million to spend and £218,000 available in the wages to make the improvements that are required for our squad. I'm relatively pleased with that. We are going to be freeing up, you know, maybe another 50 80 k in the wages through the release of some players. Um, and once that happens, we'll be in a pretty healthy spot financially. But anyway, that's enough from me for this season. We've managed to complete our objective of keeping Sheffield United in the Premier League in our first season. That is more than I could have asked for. I was very worried when we first initially took them over, but they've well outperformed what I expected. And I'm looking forward to a busy summer and a great second season. But anyway, if you haven't been enjoying this season, please consider leaving a like. Get yourself subscribed to see the second season. And until next time, take it easy.